all right guys it is update time it is uh yeah it's snowing out here in southwest missouri um got a little bit going on get into the shop here uh gonna do some uh, well make sure the lights on it's update time we're gonna talk about what's been going on with the truck things that i've been struggling with um with as far as the fuel system parts being on back order just a lot of sorry trying to get my light turned on here so we can see what we're doing oh, yeah my shop's an absolute disaster i know everybody else's shop is nice and clean and and whatnot but uh yeah so uh let's see last video ended with us working on the engine putting the crank in um it's just it's been a minute since i've been able to work on it since the last video we put the crank in uh, and i think we torqued down the bolts um something weird happened that didn't get caught on video when i was torquing down the main caps three of the bolts would not torque um every other bolt when i got to i think it was like 110 foot pounds i don't remember uh, the thing clicked like normal, get to these other ones, and they just kept tightening. Um, so I figured, uh, I figured worst fears came true. The mains cracked under the pressure of torquing the bolts, um, and the block is ruined. So that's what I thought. So I took all the bolts back out, inspected the block real well, couldn't find any signs of cracking. I took the three bolts that stretched or that wouldn't torque, and I moved them to a different location tightened everything back down and they would not torque in the new location but the bolts that were in the original location torqued down just fine so that told me that i had three bolts that were just defective they were stretching for whatever reason um, so i decided not to even risk it i took those bolts threw them in the trash and ordered a set of main studs not cheap by the way um, there was no reason to really need them on this engine I just couldn't find another set of main bolts um, and I figured since I have it apart and I'm trying to build it as best as I can, I went ahead and spent the money on it. Um, so we've got main studs and we're getting ready to put head studs in. So that's the update on the motor from the last video to today. Your nose is cold? <sighs> and let's meet my helper today. This is my beautiful daughter. We are going to call her, let's see, let's not use your real name on the internet. What name do you want to use? Makeup One. Makeup, okay, this is my daughter, Makeup One. Makeup, makeup Two one. couldn't make it, cause she's hanging out with Makeup Four, and Makeup Three is somewhere else, so. Um, yeah, I've got lots of kids, by I the way. I told you to make up a name for I said, what name do you want to use? Where'd you go, where'd you go? I said, what name do you want to use? And you said, Makeup One. So your name for the show is Makeup One. Okay. So say hello, Makeup One. Okay, so to prep the block and the heads, there's a few things we gotta do. We can't just throw bolts on there and tighten stuff down and be done. Um, there's oil all over the surfaces here from putting the pistons in and from just generally putting the engine together. Um, also, I sprayed the whole thing down with the oil to keep it from rusting. So we need to clean that off. We're going to hit it with some brake cleaner, not spray the engine though, but hit a rag with some brake cleaner, wipe it down, then go over it with a Scotch-Brite pad, get any surface rust, because there is a little bit of surface rust on it. So we're going to clean that off real good, and then we're going to go over and we're going to hit it with some acetone. We do the same thing on the head stud, or we're going to do the same, yeah, we are going to do the same thing on the head studs. We're going to soak them in acetone get the threads real clean, um, hit them with a wire brush, and maybe put them in the sonic cleaner for a few minutes. Um, those need to be clean because the threads going into the block go through the block into the water cavity, so you don't want water coming up through your studs and leaking all over the place. Uh, so threads on the bolts and on the block need to be really clean. Um, yeah, so that's about all the prep, prep work we got to do. Uh, clean oil and surface rust off, clean the head studs. Um, also, you want to make sure that there's no oil residue or anything on the deck of your block or on the surface of your 
heads because um, that will cause the head gasket to not do as proficient of a job the way it's designed uh, to seal. Something else you want to do is you want to chase all these threads, uh, get any rust uh, out of there, get any debris or gunk that may have been in there from previous head bolts, uh, and then we're going to hit those with, we're going to spray it with some brake cleaner, um, and then we're going to get some Q-tips and get in there and uh, wipe the threads down, blow it out with the compressed air. You want to make sure they're clean and dry before you put the head studs in. get enough thread sealer to get three or four threads and then it'll kind of cover the whole length of it as you screw it in. You only want to go finger tight on these until you get everything bolted on because you want to be able to move them around a little bit to get the head gasket and head on. All right, we are almost done getting these head studs in place. We cleaned them real good, got thread sealer on all of them. The next step is going to be dropping the head gasket on. Um, you wanna leave these all a little loose so that you can wiggle them a little bit. It's a really tight fit for that head gasket. Um, once the head gasket's on, you can come back and kind of snug them the rest of the way down by hand. Uh, so the next step after we finish getting the last one of these in and get the head gasket on is we want to clean up the engine head. As you can see, it's got some surface rust on it for sitting there a few months. So we're going to clean that up real good the same way we did the deck. Uh, we're going to hit it with uh, some Scotch-Brite, uh, some acetone, and get it cleaned up real good before we slam it on the engine. All right, before we drop that the rest of the way down, we're gonna just blow it off real quick, make sure that there's no debris. In between the layer of the head gasket and the head. There we go, and that's that. All right. It's like new, tell me you got that. Yep. <laughs> I was gonna say something, you're like, whoa. So, I ordered these heads on Rock Auto. They were Engine Tech brand, I believe. Um, it said new. The ad did not say refurbished, it said new. Um, they showed up, they sat in the box on the floor in my shop for a couple of months before I got around to opening them, and they look like they've been refurbished. If you look right here, it looks like a typical 6.5 head that has cracked and been repaired. So I'm a little bothered about that um, because, I mean, ideally I should have opened them as soon as they showed up and I would have noticed that. I probably would have called Rock Auto and tried to make a fuss out of it. But since I waited two months before even taking them out of the box, I really don't have a leg to stand on as far as a claim goes. Um, but they're better than the heads that were on the engine. Um, and it would have cost more to get those heads refurbished anyways. So it is what it is. That's what we're dealing with. So now we're just going over this with some acetone to clean off any remaining amount of oil residue. I'm going to hit it with a little compressed air to get any pieces of cloth. All right, now the fun part. We try not to lose a finger dropping the head on here. There we go. All right, now the fun part. We've got to cover the heads of each of these bolts in assembly lube. Gotta make sure they're really lubed up. We got, got them covered real well. That is going to prevent any kind of dry torquing. Uh, that'll throw your torque measurements off. You wanna make sure everything's lubed up real good so the bolt and washers can all just move around freely. So these are Gator fasteners. Um, 
And as many of you probably know, ARP is extremely back ordered. I ordered a set of uh, ARP head studs back in November. It is now the middle of January of the next year, so uh, two and a half months later uh, and still don't have them. Every few weeks I get another email from JEGS telling me that my order has been delayed and it's going to be shipping out at a future date. So I uh, came across this company, um, what was it, KP Performance, JP, I don't know. Found it online, they sold the Gator fasteners, I figured what the heck, I'll give it a shot. They look exactly the same as ARP fasteners, um, the tensile strength is the same. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw a screenshot up there, side by side comparison between the two different fasteners. Um, obviously I'm not sponsored by either of them. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get all the nuts on here. So the torque sequence on these um, is 25, then 50, then 75, and then you finish it off at 100 foot-pounds um, following the rotating pattern starting from the inside in a spiral motion outwards. All right, for the first 25 and 50 foot-pounds, I'm going to use a small extension. It's just easier to get to all the bolts that way, or all the nuts. Once I switch up to the 75 and the 100 foot-pound pass, it will just be <clears throat> the socket. And 17. Okay, we've got the first three passes done. Now we're gonna go with 100 foot-pounds. So if anything's gonna break, it's gonna break now. Or when we start it. Hopefully nothing breaks though. Man. And 17. All right, everything is torqued down, 100 pounds. We're gonna go back through and just double check, make sure everything is good. Guys, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. We got the heads on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the rest of this thing together. In the next video, we're gonna kind of switch gears and start getting the truck itself ready for the engine. Uh, fuel system, electrical system, uh, transmission, we're going to be putting an NV4500 manual transmission in it, so we have to cut some holes in the floor. Um, we have to cut some holes in the firewall for the clutch pedal. we got to install a clutch pedal in it. So all that kind of stuff is coming up in future videos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with some side-by-side -side comparison of ARP head studs and the Gator ones. I've never heard of Gator before. I don't know if they're a new company. I don't know if they've just rebranded. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I would because I wish I was because I could have saved 250 bucks. That's what these go for um, in January of 2022. Um, but you do get a cool T-shirt with it that didn't fit me. I'm too fat. Uh, <laughs> not. I told a buddy of mine. I'm like, yeah, man, these things came with a good t with a new T-shirt, and his response was, oh, so what you're saying is one of your kids has a new shirt? Anyways, it is what it is. I like to eat. Um, yeah, please subscribe. Please like the video. Click on the bell. Um, head on over to the Facebook page. It's Arrows Garage at Facebook. Um, yeah, that's about it. I know it's a pretty basic video. Video, just the video. Can't even talk straight. <clears throat> Maybe you should do the outro. The outro. <laughs> The outro. It's the it's outro. the it's the section of the video at the end I'll that you're like, hey, like this is it. <laughs> you wouldn't say it last time. I'll do it this time. Okay, come on, do it. All right. Just last but not same least. Time. <laughs> last but not least. Least. Man, I cannot <laughs> talk. Last but not least. <laughs> last but not least. This is my camera person for today. 
Um, so please like and, like and subscribe. subscribe to the video. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be way more awesome. <laughs> please like and subscribe. <laughs> okay. On three. One, two, oh, three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You say please and I say like and subscribe. Okay, please like and subscribe. Okay, well, see ya. <laughs>